you just got to try to contain him because he gets everybody else going. Mike, you all fired up. I'm all fired up. The coaches are fired up. The players are fired up. And the fans, the screaming demons are going bananas. Nolan Smith. Duke running that motion offense inside. Henderson drives, and he has it blocked by James Johnson. That's a 6-9, very, very good defender. That's an interesting matchup. Johnson with that great size. Very big team when you look at Wake Forest. If they can pound it inside, that's an advantage for Wake. L.D. Williams tries to go inside. Henderson with the pick. Henderson very quick. Duke has been playing stifling defense. What they did against Maryland was absolutely embarrassing. Totally shut them down. They've shut a lot of people down all year long. Yes, they have. And have had great starts in some big games, like with Purdue and Davidson and Xavier, who they were blowing out early. Henderson cut off the baseline by McFarland. They go back outside to Smith. Offensive rebound to Henderson. Two Wake Forest players went for it, knocked it loose, and Henderson was right there. He could score in a variety of ways. He's very versatile, Henderson. McFarland free on the baseline, tries to make a pass, and has it knocked out of bounds. Dino Gaudio in his second year, he has done a remarkable job keeping everything together after the death of Skip Prosser. Nobody left. None of the current players, none of the staff, none of the recruits. That's a tribute to him and the character of these people. Well, you know, both coaches have something in common. They both were head coaches at West Point, the United States Military Academy. Teague slices between two defenders. They go inside. McFarland got a shot at it. Zubek with the block. Tell you, Zubek's been a real presence as Duke can transition. Smith on the run, and L.D. Williams got a piece of that one. The last game against Maryland, Zubek had nine points, nine rebounds, and four block shots. He gives them size. No look pass to Aminu. He's a big-time diaper dandy from out of Georgia. Very active on the baseline, very strong physically. Shire held by L.D. Williams as he tries to make a drive. Great officiating crew, Mike Wood, Ray Natilli, and Tim Nestor working this ball game. And there's Mike Krzyzewski. This is the best team he's had in quite a while. This is very close to being a complete team. But very versatile team. They have so many weapons you can't defend any one individual player. Zubek had it knocked away. You know, Mike, one night it might be Shire shooting the three. Another night it could be Henderson. He's 10 for 13 in his last five games shooting the three. And a guy like Paulus and Lance Thomas come off the bench. That tells you the quality and depth they have. Shire having a tough time getting it in. Gets it to Zubek. Shire's due for a breakout game. He's been really struggling shooting the last few games. Henderson launches the three. Over the backboard and out of bounds. You can already tell the defensive intensity on both ends of the court. You know, you mentioned different schemes. When you look at Wake Forest defensively, they like to pressure the ball and then pack it in. They learned that defense from out of Dick Bennett's era when he coached at Wisconsin. And then Duke, they're going to pressure all over, deny, try to force turnovers and get layups. Nolan Smith called for a block as he tried to get in front of Teague. See this right now? They're denying. They're going to switch a lot on Teague. I tell you, he is a terrific talent. Rick Pitino told me today, he said, I made one major mistake. We didn't recruit him. We had given all our scholarships out. Why do I mention Pitino? He coached his father and he coached his uncle at Boston University and they led him to the NCAA tournament. Well, he was only 5'11 as a senior in high school. A lot of people thought he didn't have the size, but he grew three inches before he got to Wake Forest and obviously has tremendous talent. And his brother's a superstar southpaw. Pitino said, you better believe I'm going to recruit him. Marcus. Singler fires from the top of the circle. He's short. Aminu on the run. All these guys can move, and that's an offensive foul on Aminu and no basket. Duke is as good at that as any team that has ever been in the NCAA. Yeah, they got back, but you see the ability of Amino. Amino in transition. Great handle. Everyone goes up score. See you in the NBA, I like the rule where you can't take the charge under the goal. They have that little circle in there. But that's not the rule here. Nope. And you take advantage of what you've got. Boy, and Singler 
just great hustle to get back and then establish his position. Shire on the way in. He's fouled. That's so much intensity on the floor. A lot of emotion. A lot of pride playing for the ACC. But also something else, Mike, nobody points out and talks about, which is big. Two of the teams of the elite teams here are going to get a chance to play in the first round of the NCAA tournament in Greensboro. So you got a situation in North Carolina, Duke and Wake Forest. One of them is going to get left out. Two of them are going to go there for the early rounds. And that means, one, you don't get in a plane. You have to get in a car. you got your fans. A great advantage to getting to the sure. Sweet 16. And right now, there are so many teams, as you look ahead to the NCAA, that have a chance to be a number one seed and have a shot at the national championship. Certainly three teams out of this league. Exactly. Shire at the free throw line. Harvey Hale is in for the first time. The senior shooting guard out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. He wears number four. Teague's been held down pretty well so far. Well, he's not getting the open looks. Duke really concentrated, getting right up in his face. James Johnson, the sophomore from Cheyenne, Wyoming, very athletic, gets his first two. And athletic describes this entire roster for Wake Forest. He's a multi-talented guy when you talk about Johnson, good defender. He's a guy with a great upside to his game. Henderson looking for a screen. See, Duke wants to basically attack you off the dribble, and they're going to pack it in and sag. They pressure the ball, and everyone else sags, and then they recover, and they got great length. Shire carried the ball, lost it out of bounds. See, they got great length, Mike, as Mike Krzyzewski told us before. So when they recover defensively, they can get at you and change a shot. Maybe not block it, but change the look. At least make you defend make you think about it and sometimes not take it. Teague all the way with a runner. What a big time player, Mike. He can beat you in many ways. He can attack off the dribble. He can shoot the jump shot. He likes the big stage. Jeff Teague, remember that name. He's already been the two-time ACC player of the week and Teague called for a foul there as he nearly got the steal. Indianapolis. For the nation's new number one, Coach K said not seeing a team play for seven days in the basketball world is like not seeing someone in real life for two years, meaning a ton can change, which is a huge concern to the Blue Devils, Mike. Hey, Heather, I'll tell you this also. He has to be really proud of their defense. How good has their defense been, Mike? In the ACC five games, no one has scored more than 59 points in today's day and age Remarkable. against Duke. Henderson, great first step, kicks it back out to Shire, had the shot and passed on it. Duke has not gone to its bench yet. Well, you can see the Wake Forest defense, they can trouble you because of that length. Henderson, baseline, stripped on the way up. L.D. Williams got two fouls already. Smith's a veteran player. Had a broken bone in his foot, missed the entire pre-conference. L.D. Williams is one of those lockdown defensive players, great athlete. Singler against Teague, head fake against Johnson, missed the shot. Offensive rebound. That's that size inside, Mike, you talked about. That size is a factor. They wear you down, too, physically. Mike the Krzyzewski. jump ball situation, possession error gives it to Wake. Take a look right there, that size. Look at these guys. Unbelievable. One of the greatest big players ever to play. Tim Duncan played here, and he was brilliant. Remember, they won ACC back-to-back -back titles in the tournament. Yes, sir. Johnson with a miss, but he draws a foul. 95 and 96, Davey Odom. Johnson's good score when he's back to the basket. Take a look at Tim Duncan, one of the premier players in my book where the proceeds go to the V Foundation. This guy was so special. What about Chris Paul? How special oh. is he? And he was the one who said about Jeff T. He's one of the best scorers I have ever seen. And that's pretty good coming from Chris Paul. Well, he's one of the elite players now in the NBA. The young sure stars is. when you talk, certainly Wade and Kobe and LeBron and Mr. Howard down there with the Magic as well. And Paul, the other day, he had 27 points, 15 assists, and 10 <laughs> rebounds. Hey, Smith is in for the first time for Wake Forest. Greg Paulus and Lance Thomas check in for the first time for Duke. And it is 8-4, Deacons. 
How many teams do you think Paulus and certainly Thomas can start for an American? Paulus's shot has been getting better. This one is tipped. It's going to go out of bounds. He started off so badly, and now the percentage continues to get better, and he has become more and more dangerous as a scorer coming off the bench. And he has a great attitude, a great mindset. Most kids would be upset, obviously, and disappointed not starting a senior year after playing for three years as a starter. Minutes are down, but has that great attitude. He was responsible, really, for that win over Georgetown. He's always had a great attitude. Smith really puts pressure on a defense with his speed and quickness. He's a pass first point guard. Hale is a shooter, basically. He's had a tough time shooting free throws his first two years. He's improved this year. 44% as a freshman, 29% as a south. How can you hit 29%? He's really improved, though. He's worked on it. Smith, shot clock at eight. Showing a lot of patience. That's a Duke's defense. They don't give you open looks. Smith, nice dish inside and a foul going to be on Thomas as they got the ball inside to another big man 611 Dave Mountain North Carolina great size coming off that bench Weaver a lot of people will tell you they think the talent level on this Wake Forest team is as good as anybody in the country, including North Carolina, who a lot of people thought had more talent than anyone. You know, Mike, what really impressed me is when they went to BYU and beat BYU with a 53-game win streak. They then <clears throat> ended that win streak, come back, beat North Carolina, go on a road, yep. beat a good Boston College team by 20 on a road, and then go to Clemson and beat Clemson when they're under yes, feeder. I mean, that stretch was as good as any college team has played defensively and offensively. Wake had an 8 nothing run and they lead 10 to 4. Remember this, they've won four of the last five games against Duke on this floor. Thomas out of control and had it rejected. But also Duke has won five of the last six meetings when you factor in the ACC and down at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Watch this block. Johnson he does so many things, Johnson. Really does. Paulus. Great size. Singler offensive rebound. Singler keeps it alive, gets the bucket. He's having a terrific year. Averaging 16 a game, nine rebounds a game. Very active. Nobody outworks him. Smith. Nice drive is Smith. Little shake and bake. They say he's 100% now from that broken bone in his foot. This place is electric, Mike. This place is electric. Look at the energy. Push off on Henderson, his first. Dino Gaudio with a huge crowd behind him here. 14,665 at the Joel Coliseum. They were lined up all over the place outside trying to get tickets. None to be had. Should have told again, holy you, you have all the contacts and got seats. <laughs> no. As that pressure defense by Duke, they're doing a lot of switching up on top. Now they got a total mismatch. Weaver should have rolled in the basket. He had Paulus on him. Nolan Smith so good at handling the basketball. But Dick, what is strange, he is nominally the point guard, but he only has two more assists than he does turnovers. He is not what you look at in the book as a point guard. He's one of those combo guards. He's a good defensive player. Singler strip. Teague has it. The fourth Duke turnover. Teague with a runner too strong. Bad shot right there by Teague. The defense forced him into a bad shot. I think he had half, halfway decided to pass, halfway decided to shoot. Paulus wide open and buries the three. That's the first wide open look they've had tonight. Not bad having a thousand point scorer come off your bench, give you point production. LD Williams. Duke holding its own on the boards, which is going to be a big key to this game. Well, the one thing that's also a key is we can't turn the ball over. Early this year, they were turning it over quite a bit. You turn it over against Duke, they'll get the slam jam the other way. Smith with a runner in and out. Good defense by Weaver. Johnson kicks it up to T. Penetrates on Paulus, little floater. LB Williams with a follow. Williams with that strength. Good athleticism. 
Good rebounder at 6'4". Very athletic, a lockdown defender. Yeah, he's like the Yale man, man. He'll lock you up. He's on Smith trying to take out there. Offensive sets by going after the point guard. They play right now. Paul is and Smith together. You got like two point guards on the floor. McClure is in there for Duke. They're going to need Paulus's shooting tonight. He's already hit one. Takes this one from the top of the circle. Fatigue at least got in there to influence the shot. Look at that speed. The waiver. Boy, was he flying. Coming up, we continue our countdown of the top 30 plays of the last 30 years. Stay with us. Oh, to start 21%. Look who's here. Yes, Bill sir. Cower. He's a basketball lover. His daughter played at Princeton, loves the game. And his younger daughter, I got a scouting report on Mr. Cower. His younger daughter is dating a future Duke star, Ryan Kelly, who they signed. Big time player. I saw him play a workout when he was being recruited by Notre Dame, and he committed to Duke. Hey, Bill Cower, I hate to break his heart. I hate to break his heart. No. Arizona. The Cardinals really? are going to win the Super Bowl 28 21. Mr. Warner will not be denied. See, I'm lucky. Bill, Bill can't hear me now. He does a great job on CBS. How successful? Yes, he has. How successful have you been on your picks in the past? Pretty Look, good. Really? Yeah, pretty good. Oh, Did I believe you? <laughs> Williams kicks it out to Amino. He'll try a three. Wake Forest not getting many second chance opportunities. Zubek is back in there against McFarlane on the double team. Missed everything. Good save inside. Nolan Smith in among the trees at 6 2. See, Nolan Smith's got strong body just like Lawson. They're strong as point guards, and they can do that. Hurt you on the offensive glass. McFarlane. He had a big game. McFarlane had a big game against North Carolina. He's not just big, he's a tough kid. 16 11. Wake by five. Shire. Got it. If Shire makes that three, it stretches the defense even a little more. I'll tell you one thing. When they got those weapons going with Shire making threes, Henderson, I mean, they become so lethal. Yep. They live and die with that three-point shot. And when they're on, they are so tough to beat. The Wake Forest, as talented as it gets. Teague. He gets L.D. Williams with a good three. I think really a key early in this game, Duke has not given any three-point looks to T, who's one of the premier three-point shooters in the nation. And L.D. Williams is a guy they'll let have that shot. He's a 21% long-range shooter. Shire gets inside with Teague on his back. Tipped in by Singler. And what a year he has had. I really think the presence of Zubek has helped him so much because he now can play people on the outside yeah. rather than get physically beaten up on the You're inside. Right. Jay Billis made that point, and I couldn't agree. We got some great young guys. And Franny Frischella, heard him last night, talking about Blake Griffin, how he gets people in foul trouble. Steve Lavin, Jimmy Dykes did a great job last night in the Kentucky game, talking about how they shut down Meeks, who's been like Teague, a super, super scorer. Smith, shot clock down to five, makes a bad pass, loose ball. Here comes Shire, and he has it knocked away. This Saturday, ESPN will be there for that game, the game day crew. Florida Gators, Tennessee, all hoping to get into the NCAA tournament. That becomes a big game. SEC not as tough from top to bottom as it's been in the past. Singler on McFarland trying to take him off the dribble. Shire drifted a little bit on the jump shot. The follow, no good. Zubek is there trying to keep it alive. And McFarland with a rebound. And tipped and stolen. Here comes Henderson. Five turnovers for Wake Forest. Smith out of the corner. Air ball. Our stars have been really quiet thus far. When you look at Henderson and T. T. Zubek commits the foul. That was a good catch by McFarlane on a low bounce pass. 
Talk about big games, Mike. Jeff T had 34 on North Carolina, 30 against BYU, 29 with Boston College, 24 with Clemson. He loves the big stage, and he's been brilliant from out of Indianapolis. Nolan Smith got that last foul, and McFarlane out of Lovington, Illinois, will go to the line. Pretty good free throw shooter, almost 75%. Misses the first there. He's got to work on getting a lot stronger physically, but he has improved immensely from last year. He really came into his own last season, got up to uh, nearly double figure scoring and very good rebounder over six and a half a game. Missed both free throws here, however. How big are they when you talk about a close game converting just like special teams in football? They did not do a good job at the line in that Virginia Tech loss. They didn't get there very often, didn't score very many points. Singler, short. Teague, pull up three. Wow, that's like a layup. That's like a layup. If he gets the open look, County shooting 53% from the trifecta. That's the first look he's got tonight from the three. He doesn't shoot that many threes, but he makes better than half of the ones he takes. Henderson with a runner. Cuts the lead back to one at 19-18. He says, Jeff, anything you can do, I can do better. Teague, McFarland was right there. Good offensive rebound by the big guy hanging around the basket. Oh, this is fun, Mike. This is stealing money. Please, this is stealing money. Well, without Zubek in there, McFarland can just hang around the rim. Smith too strong. Singler tried to get the rebound, had it knocked away from him. Jeff Teague, the sophomore out of Indianapolis, averaging 21 and a half points a game, hits his first three of the night. Indianapolis. The assistant coaches, managers, in and out today. The door stayed closed the entire time. Coach Gaudio told his team, just do what we've been doing all year. You've played in the biggest games in the country several times already, and you've shown you know how to do it. You've been fortunate enough to win. You know how to handle the spotlight. So far, pretty calm and cool under, forget, under pressure. What do you guys think? And, Heather, what they have done, both teams defensively, exactly what they set out to do tonight. Giving the other team just an awful lot of trouble getting open shots. Paulus is back in with McCour. Paulus has already hit one three, misses that one. I think they're shooting the ball too quickly. I think they got to get a little more motion offensively, move the ball a little bit more to get a better shot. You talk about great defense. When you look at Duke, Mike, one of the keys to their defense is communicating and talking, making sure they talk. Number two, to be in great physical condition to play the kind of defense they play. And number three, a rhythm to their defense, a unit. A lot of teams play great individual on the ball, but they don't coordinate and have a rhythm. Duke has a rhythm to their defense. Aminu at the line, a big-time recruit out of Norcross, Georgia. His brother plays at Georgia Tech. He'll play against his brother this week. Yeah. Georgia Tech got some good news with the recruitment of Derek Favors. That's going to help poor you at big time. He suffered so much with the loss of players to the NBA quickly. It's an academic problem. 22-18. Zubak back in there. Blocked by McFarland, who's good as ground on the baseline. Yeah, never left his feet. McClure rarely looks to shoot. Zubek knocks this one out of bounds. Take a look at Amino right here. He gets caught with an elbow, and he had to go out for a lot of minutes. Not to take anything away from Virginia Tech, no. but McFarland also missed a lot of time, was in foul trouble. Virginia Tech took advantage of it. In fact, they won 9 out of 10, and the playing great to just beat Miami on the road. Teague trying to get inside, goes baseline, kicks it over in the corner. Oh, 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 are you kidding me? That's a diaper dagger. The screaming demons love it. They jump with joy. 24-18. That was spectacular. Wow. Indeed. Yeah. Look at that defense. Pressure the ball, sag, and then close out on shooters. 
It's going to be a foul on McFarlane, who was matched up. Now watch this right there. Nobody blocks him out. Nobody blocks him out. He uses that great body, that strength, explosiveness. One of the premier diaper dandies in the nation. McFarlane was trying to guard Paulus 20 feet away from the basket. Paid for it with a foul. Paulus lobs. Zubek blocked. Johnson got a piece of it, I think. How much do you want to wager? And I'm not a wagering guy. Mr. Amino's dunk will be featured on SportsCenter. <laughs> I'll give you even odds on that one. Hale is back in. They got to get some minutes out of Hale. They haven't been going to their bench like they did earlier this year. They're starting to shorten their roster. Good play by Paulus. See, hasn't gotten anything out of Shire yet. See, watch, they'll pressure the ball and then sag everyone else, try to close off on the interior. Don't allow Duke to beat you to the goal with the dribble. Singler against Johnson, can't score. Good physical defense. Zubak, great save. Nice pass inside. Henderson. Boy, he can get up with anybody. He really does. He's got great bounce. Played with Ellington in high school. What a high school team that must have been. Half a dozen for Henderson. How hard you can appreciate these kids are playing from where we're sitting. The keyword as Coach Knight. Steal by Paulus. Paulus with the steal. That's a great combination. Point guard Mr. Musburger to shooting guard Mr. Knight. Fifth turnover. Duke makes you pay when you make a mistake. They cut the lead back to two. That's a superb point, Mike. When you turn it over against Duke, you can almost tell it's going to be a conversion. These are two quality teams. Aren't they? Aminu starts down the lane. There's going to be a foul on Henderson. That'll I think be when, his second. Mike, I think when you look at our nation right now, there's six legitimate teams that'll battle for a number one seed. Three in this conference, North Carolina, Duke, Wake Forest, Connecticut, and Pittsburgh, and you certainly have Oklahoma. Jeff Capel, a former Dukey, doing a great job on the yep. rising young stars in coaching. Here's the way the ACC looks right now. Duke, the only remaining unbeaten team in conference play. North Carolina already with those two losses, which just stunned everybody. Hey, don't count out Virginia Tech. They were a team earlier this year, lost some heartbreakers. Seth Greenberg's got them really playing well now. Malcolm Delaney's been playing well. So we know about J.D. Vassalo, who can flat out oh, yeah. shoot it. He can fill it up. Yes, sir. Allen, they got a solid club, a veteran team. Dino Gaudio making excellent use of his bench. I think he may see seven teams this year from this conference in the NCAA tournament. I really do. The three we know about, Clemson will be in there, Virginia Tech, Florida State, and Miami, even though Miami slipped a little recently. Clemson is much better than people will give them credit for after the loss to North Carolina. They are a lot better than they showed that night. North Carolina, when they're on the raid game, they can embarrass a lot of people. Singler cut off at the baseline, kicks it back to Shire, shoots under pressure. Singler had a hand on it, couldn't hold it. No offensive rebounds for anybody tonight. Aminu, baseline. Weaver. Clark is in for the first time, and he misses. He's from out of Sarasota, Florida, right? My own territory. Outstanding high school player. Williams for Duke had a three and missed it. McClure was there and missed the point blank follow. Loose ball out to Shire. So Mike Krzyzewski going very deep in his bench to try to counter Wake Forest. You know, I talked about it earlier. The length of the Wake Forest players, they really affect your shooting ability. Give and go and Williams with the jam. What a pretty play by Shire and real hustle by Williams. Excellent execution. Bubbly with that jam right there. Great jam down I'm the lane. I'm sorry, lane. Said Williams, it was Elliot Plumley. Plumley really down the lane. They, they really have high hopes for him, Dick. Aminu traveled before the foul. Mike Wood with a good call. He looked at his pivot foot. They also got a commitment from Plumley's brother next year. They think he's going to be a heck yes, of a sir. player. We've got a timeout. 2:39 left in the half.
Oh, this is a lot of fun. Exactly uh, what we expected, Jonesy. It's 26-24, the lead two for the Deacons, and it has been some tough defense on both sides. Zubek, Henderson on the bench. I'll tell you this, Teague, they were able to contain them. Last year, they beat Duke here by 13, and Teague had 26. So far tonight, he's two for six with five points that kept them under control. Which is all they can hope to do. Singler baseline jumper. I love the length and the athleticism of this Wake Forest team. Duke winning the rebounding battle by one. Mike Krzyzewski would take that all night long. You sound like Lionel Richie all night long, That's baby. Right. Johnson against McClure backing in. Nice pass. Great skip pass. out of the corner, too strong. Not seeing many transition layups. Both clubs doing an excellent job defensively in transition. Wake Forest athleticism and length really bothering Duke shooting. There's that scheme, that defensive scheme. Pressure the ball, sag. Shire got that one. It's a two-pointer and a toe on the line. He's such a good shooter. He goes through stretches sometimes, shot selection, but he really, you give him an open look, he's going to convert. Fourth tie of the ball game. Duke style denial, pressure. Duke on a little bit of a run now, Mike. Eight to two run, four to one ratio there. Mike Krzyzewski, you talk about great starts. Nine times that he's been at Duke, they've jumped out to 18 and one starts. Nine times. Pretty good, isn't it? Oh, wow. You know, I mentioned about the defense they play with. Coach Gunnio was telling us that he went to see the coaching staff at Xavier, Sean Miller and company, because they adopted that philosophy of Dick Bennett. They went to also talk to Tony Bennett, and they're utilizing incorporating that with their style of play. And I think it's important that you really understand the strength of your players and utilize a system that matches their strength. And certainly the one thing that had hurt Wake Forest over the years is they had not been a very good defensive team. I tell you, Skip Prosser would be on cloud nine tonight with the oh. enthusiasm, the energy. Also, that Bill Cowers here because Skip Prosser was a terrific Steeler fan, loved the Steelers. In fact, you know, he had the Pittsburgh job before they gave it to Jamie Dixon. Skip Prosser could have went back home, but they made a great choice getting Jamie. Gary Clark makes both free throws. Wake back on top by two. Another block inside. Johnson has played terrific defense. That's that length. This guy pulls up, shows some maturity right there. See, last time he went to the goal and he charged. That time he's under control. Under control. That is smart, good basketball IQ by Amino. Take a look at this length right here. They got great length defensively. Get it out of here, baby. Thou shalt not enter thy lane. The first commandment, they say, with wait. Do not enter thy lane. That's our commandment defensively. Seven block shots for the Deacons. Well, I was up in that crowd with those kids. They're wacky. Number one, though, I don't care what people tell me. The innovativeness, the creativeness of the Cameron Crazies. Everybody's tried to emulate them all over the nation, but they've been the original for years. I got to get up one time to pass you with the crowd down there and do it. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm afraid they'd get me to the door and just keep going. Eight different weight players have scored in this game. They got eight guys that are on the board. Paulus is in for the final minute of the first half. Ish Smith picks him up. Nice Shire, curl. nice cut. And he's fouled. Great curl move. What really impresses me when you think about Duke and you hear players around the league always talk about it, they always play so hard. A tribute to Mike Krzyzewski, who did an amazing job bringing back a sense of pride to the USA Olympic team, winning that gold medal. A lot of people thought maybe that would affect them coaching this year. Be exhausted. Hasn't affected them other than in a positive way. Yeah, he's better. He's better. <laughs> Shire at the free throw line, knocks it down. He has hit 81 of 96 free throws this year. 
Hey, Cox, what does Mike Krzyzewski want to do with his time off this year? He is just longing for a vacation of staying at home. He admitted earlier today he's already fatigued. It's been a long season, more sore than normal because of his three years of pulling double duty as the head of USA Basketball and winning a gold medal. He said, the minute I got home from Beijing, I was on the road recruiting. I don't want my USA Basketball commitment to hurt Duke. So he has not taken a day off. He just wants to stay home, guys. Yeah, but Mickey will throw him out of the house. Mickey will say, get out of here, coach. My wife tells me I'm home for like two days. Please, win your next game? Get well, out of here. Don't judge their relationship by <laughs> yours, you know. Hey, 38 years, that lady's <laughs> lived with me. 38 years, she deserves sainthood. Amen. More college basketball. Get Chance for number one seed. Three out of the ACC, these two, and North Carolina. Oklahoma, Pittsburgh, and Connecticut. I think it would be a stretch for anyone else to get into that battle to take a number one seed. Also, I think this game is big because these clubs want to play home. They can tell you it doesn't matter. They would rather play the first two rounds in Greensboro. Three seconds on the shot clock. Nine points. clock. Wake Forest with a two-point lead. Now the shot clock is off. So Wake can play for the last shot. Teague. Forced by oh, shot. <laughs> oh, look at the steal on the inbound. Clark with the steal. Was there a foul or not? No, they didn't call it. But what a play by T. How he was able to convert this shot is amazing. Amazing. Take a look at this. Showing you why he's one of the PT peers in the nation. Boy, drifting to his left and away from the back. Mike, when they played Florida State, they only scored 19 in the first half, but broke out in the second half and won that game. So keep an eye on that. Shooting 28% and only down five. And the reason they're shooting 28% is the length of that Wake Forest defense. They have really bothered Duke's offense tonight. Nice move by Henderson. He has eight. How to hope you shoot a percentage, get open looks like that. They haven't had many of those. LD Williams picked up by Nolan Smith. I mean you. He's a blind jumper. He's a really good-looking young player. Hey, Bill Cowher came over and told us, he said, hey, this defense is unbelievable. I said, yeah, reminiscent of your Steelers, that tenacious thing. Single to the runner with a double pump. One and done. Yeah, it was nice of Bill to take the time to come over. He's doing a great job in the studio for CBS. Just to work. He likes it. He says, I'm undefeated. Never lose a game. I That's said, tell right. me about it. Pressure's got to be a little less, doesn't it? Paycheck's not as good. <laughs> Henderson. Wow. He's been on fire the last five games. Dick, he has become a star. You know, he is a star. He's got star ability. His dad was quite a player. Played 10 years in the NBA. 35-32. Zubek not starting the second half, and the Garland turns it over. So Duke is going small. Lance Thomas. Lance Thomas in there. Lance Thomas did a great job. You look at the stat sheet right now, 28%. Offense and rebounds, 12. That tells you you're playing very aggressive basketball. Ninth turnover. Henderson again too strong here. Teague with a good rebound inside over Nolan Smith. Teague, no look pass. Johnson fouled by Shire. He's got great vision. He can really pass the ball. Comes from an area where they have like five first round draft choices in the Indianapolis area. Michael Conley, Greg Oden, George Hill. He's first rounded down with San Antonio. They've had some outstanding. Courtney Lee's another one was a first rounder from that area. Played for Western Kentucky. Johnson hits the first free throw. We check in with Heather. Some notes from the Duke locker room at the half. The biggest concern, like you both mentioned, that they're shooting just 28% from the field. The message to the troops, be more aggressive. Utilize your quickness. Saying we're getting the offensive boards and taking shots near the rim. You've just got to get those gimmies in the second half. They'd like Club Henderson to stay out of foul trouble. So far, they're satisfied with the effort against Jeff T. Number four, Johnson with a miss, and he's fouled. 
That's a good foul because he had himself a jam right there. Would have brought the house down. Now he has to go to the free throw alert and earn it. As you look at Dino Gordio, West Point cadet coach for four years. That went to Loyola over in Maryland. That was a big foul. That's three on Henderson. Yeah, that's the only negative right there. The third on Henderson. Johnson will go right back to the line. I mean, look at what they have up front. Aminu is 6'9. Johnson 6'9, 245. McFarland 7 feet, 235. The guards are big. This is just a huge athletic team. Yeah, very physical team. Come off the bench with some size as well. And that length really bothers shooters. They're tough to beat, especially on this floor. It was a great win for Virginia Tech to be able to come here and beat them. Oh, oh are you kidding? kidding? Are you serious? Henderson showing a little bit of a Grand Hill style. Holy I mean, cow, what a shot. He has really matured as a player. A star is born in a Duke uniform. The last three minutes, that's the reverse jam. Takes it to the goal with authority. He was that... wrote right by a seven-footer with the reverse. Well, you know, he's always here from everybody about his athleticism, about him. He had the potential to be a star, but we never saw it with consistent. Mike told us the oh, wrist man. injury really hurt him. Yeah, he really had surgery. Did. Took him away from basketball for so long. Aminu has it rejected. Nolan Smith steps on the sideline. Lance Thomas giving him a good effort defensively. Came out of St. Benedict's, played for Dan Hurley, where they got quite a program. Well, I tell you, that even lit up the Wake Forest crowd. Henderson's got all their points here in the second half. Want to say hello to Ray Natilli Jr., uh, one of our officials' fathers. He's in the hospital recovering from a procedure. We hope he'll be just fine. Hope he enjoys the Super Bowl. Probably won't get home in time to see it. It's a little jam city here. Screaming demons love it. Henderson short. They can really get out in transition also. Wait. Oh, that nice John pass. John what a terrific look. Finding the trailer. Great communication. Great execution. Biggest lead for the Demon Deacons. They be at number one. Could maybe be a Dennis. I mean, Pittsburgh gets to be number one. They get bumped. Wake Forest gets to be number one. They get beat. Duke's number one. Hey, maybe Connecticut will be number one next Monday against Louisville on the road. And then how long would that last? It's not an easy place to be, especially when you're playing quality people like this. But the one thing about Duke, whether they're number one or number ten or number five or wherever, Mike, they get everyone's best hit. Every game they play, sure they're a standard that people want to attain and achieve. And the one thing I've always respected about the Duke team and players and coaches, their kids have always met that standard with a supreme effort. Singler will get a second shot. Five points on the night for Singler, who averages 16 and a half. You know, you and I are like three feet from the court. The intensity and the passion and the emotion that these kids are playing with is so special. And that's what makes the college game, that jersey in the front, man. It's all about that name on the front of that jersey. Well, especially when you look at the teams and the talent in this league right now with Duke, Wake Forest, North Carolina, Clemson, and you throw in Virginia Tech, certainly after the win here, they deserve to be in that mix. That is going to be a pretty good tournament, isn't it? Oh, it's going to be terrific. Nice look. Nice dip from McFarland. T can really find people. He's not just the scorer. He has ability to find people. And what makes him unique, he can pull up and make the long-range jumper. Three assists for T. Bad pass by Henderson. Picked off by McFarland. They were trying to hit Zubek. McFarland from 16. And McFarland with the foul on Paulus as he nearly knocked him out of the gym and then tries to grab him and hold him up. He compounded his situation. First took a bad shot because he's not that kind of shooter from the perimeter. And then he compounded it by really attacking the basket out of frustration. See, right now, that's not his range. Duke let him shoot that shot all day. And then he compounds it right there, climbing the back. The 
is in. Collins gives it up to Shire. They've done a great job containing Singler as well. Good feed to Shire, blocked by McFarland. Shire got it back. And there's that size again, a factor. The size again, a factor. Let's join Mark Jones. He's in the studio with an update. Welcome back to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The lead is eight, and Mike Krzyzewski may be seeing the writing on the wall as Wake Forest has outplayed his Blue Devils so far. We have 15.56 to go in the second half of our ball game. What Mike Krzyzewski was concerned about, the length and size of Wake Forest defense, changing shots, altering shots, blocking shots. Also a big factor in the game thus far, Wake has gone to the free throw line much more than Duke, and that is very, very rare. Usually Duke goes to the line so many more times with their driving ability, but in this game, Coach K's kids have not gotten to the line, and that tells you they're playing good defense, Wake Forest, without fouling, and that's a plus. And Wake has been able to do that all year long. They have borrowed a page from Duke's playbook. 44 to 38 speed for the runner. Here comes Paulus. You gotta find Shire when you get back. He gets on that wing for that three. Paulus, that's his favorite spot, top of the circle. Singler, big offensive rebound foul on the way back in. Singler did a great rebounds for Singler. Did a great job getting that offensive rebound. Let's check in with Heather. Well, during that last time out, Coach K changed his demeanor throughout this game. He's been stoic until moments ago when he got very aggressive, very animated, got in the face of his players, especially Brian Zubik, who said, you have to go after the ball. Then went to the entire team, said, you're not playing hard. You're bringing the ball up the court slowly. You're lackadaisical. You're not being aggressive around the rim, all of which supporting the fact, guys, that they're not getting to the line like they usually do. You're right, Heather, and uh, Zubek on the bench right now. So is McFarland for Wake. That's because he has four personal fouls. Singler knocks down the second one. The lead is back to four. Duke, as you might expect, will not go away. You know, Wake Forest leads the conference in field goal percentage or offensively better than 50%. They got five guys shooting 50%. Only two teams have shot 50% as you watch the conversion of Smith with the penetration. Georgetown and Rhode Island. Oh, what a beautiful shot by Ish Smith. Plumley wanted the ball inside. They didn't get it to him. Shire down the lane. Drops it off to Henderson. No basket, but he's fouled. And Duke really only had two teams have shot better than 50% against them. They're starting to go to the free throw line now. The last three possessions, they've been able to get to that line, and that's Getting a plus more penetration, for them. aren't they? Attacking the basket, becoming more aggressive, as Heather said. They got to be more aggressive. Take a look at that. 
Henderson, who has really improved his free throw shooting this year, missed that one bad. He is 0 for 2 from the line tonight, but on the season, 77% after starting the campaign career at 65. Teague will get a breather. See, Mike, if you can get to the free throw line as often as Duke does, you wear teams down. You beat them up. You get guys in foul trouble. You play an aggressive basketball and it becomes contagious. And they're starting to play a little bit more aggressive with the bounce and attacking the basket. 46-41. Smith, very, very quick. Finger roll for David Weaver. Lost out of bounds. Singler couldn't hold it. And it will be out to Wake Forest under the basket. As a look at the coaching staff, Mr. Wojciechowski, Mr. Collins, as they flank Coach K. What a guy to learn from. It's unbelievable to be able to soak in that knowledge. Johnny Dawkins, gone. Uh, the longtime assistant Stanford. coach and went to Stanford. That's what happens when you're at Duke. You can wait and get the job that you want. The right time, the right opportunity. And that's what he got at Stanford. All the way on the right, Chris Patero. That's his son-in-law. Played at West Point. So we got another West Point connection there as well. Smith calling out the play he wants. 14 and a half minutes to go in the game. Johnson, what a good-looking player he is. Out to L.D. Williams. Smith, excellent crossover. Johnson is open. Little runner in the lane. He's a, Johnson. He's a big time player. So versatile. He has great touch, great feel. He's got great handle for a big guy. And he's a defensive dynamite as well. He has nine points, averages 13 and a half. Oh, they wanted to charge. Instead, it's a chance for a three-point play. Singer no, he called no. the charge. He called right. the charge. They Singler wanted the charge. called for the charge at the baseline. He came a long, long way. Henderson and Singler had 10 points in the first half, combining an 11 in the second half. 48-41, Smith. Oh. Weaver, nice job, bounces it off Singler and saves it for the Deacons. Tell you when you play defense like these two teams, you're always going to have a chance to get to the winner's circle. Both these clubs really get after it. I mean, there's the charge, there's no doubt. He's leaving the feet, he's up in the air. Michael Wood with the call. Screaming Demons helped a little bit on that call on a baseline as well. Weaver guarded by Paulus. This can be a reach around. And a foul on Plumley, his second, and he knew he made a mistake immediately. Amino does a great job using his body, makes himself big and wide. The Saturday ES Florida against Tennessee. That's college basketball on ESPN this Saturday. That's our game Johnson. day crew. Good hustle by the Deacons, but they can't track it down. Kept alive by Aminu. See, I think Duke's going to get in the winner's circle tonight. Paulus is going to have to play big. I think this experience could be a major factor in this environment. This is a tough environment to come in and beat a quality team like Wake. The lead is seven. Every time Wake Forest has extended the lead, Duke has had an answer and come right back. Singler, that's a two. It's also the worst shot in basketball. You back up three inches, it's a three-point shot. I mean, he goes baseline, did not get the roll. Weaver tipped it to the corner. Good hustle by McClure. Good matchup with Singler and Johnson. Oh, got another charge. Could have called another charge there. No call. Sure could have pushed off with that free arm. Smith back the other way. Aminu into the lane, nearly traveled. Johnson. Weaver. You got to convert that. You got to utilize that big body and strength. And yeah, rotate. 6'11, 235. You got to make a shot from a foot and a half. Don't exactly. You, you got to take that up strong. Got to be physical with the ball. They keep rotating Amino and Johnson on Singler. Singler's become one of the real stars in the ACC. Zubek is back in. Henderson returns. They're getting good minutes out of Smith off the bench. He really is. Veteran player. 
Weaver gives it up to Hale. He'll make some audio telling him what he wants to do. He'll make some big shots against North Carolina. T got a good back screen into the lane. It's Belford Mike. You don't even remember this stuff. I watched him right there. You know he reminds me of Randolph Childress. He yes, reminds he me of Childress. Yes, he does. Remember that? He was sensational. He's got 10. 50 to 43. This could easily get away from Duke if they're not careful. Henderson, nice cut to the lane, had it knocked down. Here comes Smith. Three on one. Three on one. Bounce to the Get it to you, baby. Get it to you, baby. The biggest lead of the night. Nine points. 52 43 Deacon. They are good, my friend. They are good. They are not a protector. They are a contender. there but Johnson how rare is that to make a steal after a timeout with Duke setting up a play he makes the steal and he gets the easy jam ladies and gentlemen Jonesy, I'll tell you one thing, keep an eye on that Villanova team. They're really outstanding on the perimeter. And watch Louisville. I can't wait for next Monday night when Connecticut invades Louisville. We'll have it on ESPN. That's going to be one quite a great matchup. The lead is eight. Aminu with a runner. Here comes Smith. Wake Forest is a terrific team because they play great defense on the three-point shooters. They do a great job with field goal percentage defensively. They block an average of six shots per game. All five starters shoot better than 50%. I mean, what more? You talk about offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency. They grade out to an A. Look at Dino Gordio. Shooting fouls on T, his second, and Smith goes to the line. Missed the front end of a one and one. Duke's got to get some help from some other people. It's been Henderson and Singler. Nobody else is really stepping up, giving them any kind of quality play. Teague blows right down the lane, but missed the shot. They got to get somebody else to step up and help. McClure kicks it out to Singler. It's all been Singler and Henderson offensively, Mike. Leans in. Oh, shot. What a shot. That's a big time shot. That's why he'll make all ACC. Dozen for Singler. Smith will play the point so T can be the shooting guard in this set. He's a lot stronger this year. Singler is a better shape physically. Got a little fatigued at the end of the year last year. Smith to a main block from behind. 
They want to well, that's a foul, but I don't think so. Teague knocks it away. Smith back, and he's out. They had a layup up on the other end. This is a big time move right here. Watch this spin. Seal the defense off. Protect the basketball. Use your body. Hey, man, I don't know what you think. Here's my guys to talk about all ACC. Hansbrough, Teague, McClinton, Singler, Henderson, and Lawson. I thought you can factor in Rice and Tony Douglas. Tough to keep Tyrese Rice out of that top five. Look at this Look speed. at Smith. And a foul and a little pushing afterward. Ref's going to have to jump in here now. Starting to get a little emotional on the floor. Boy, he just sliced down the lane. He's a jet with the basketball, Mike. He's a jet. Yeah, that's a block. He's a jet with the ball. He has worked so hard to improve as a free throw shooter. 44% as a freshman, 29% as a south, and he's a point guard. You better make some free throws. Absolutely. Or you're not going to be on the floor at the end of the game. Coming into this game, he'd only gone to the free throw line 11 times. Knocks this one in, and I think he's still a little shaken up in that collision after hitting the floor. He had made seven of his first eight this year on the free throw line, so the kid has really worked hard, and that's paying off in dividends for him. This is a much better free throw shooter. 57 to 48. Hats off to the Wake Forest defense. So far, they have done in the Duke three point game, and that's an integral part of this attack. Also, Twins off turnovers are doing a great job not turning it over. Singler, great save, but he's out of bounds. Check in with Heather. Well, Duke was talking about why Wake is so good. Well, also because they've got a player named Jeff Teague, and the opposing coach had huge words to say. Coach K gave me his assessment this morning. Say Teague is a legitimate national player of your candidate. He plays with an air of a special player. His confidence permeates his team. Now, we've seen it tonight. Even if Teague is maybe not shooting the ball as well as he'd like, he's been elevating his teammates in every aspect of the game. And Coach K is hoping in this last time. Duke can control Wake's confidence by controlling Jeff T with a little pressure D guys. Heather, you're absolutely right. As Weaver scored, Mike Krzyzewski said, some guys are good and don't know it. Some guys think they're good and really aren't. Teague is great and he knows it. And there's an air ball by Singler. I tell you who deserves a big hand tonight. The Screaming Demon fans have given him a great lift. And also, bench play. Smith has been brilliant for them off the bench with his quickness, his penetration ability, yes, he has. his defensive ability. He has given them solid, solid minutes. Free throw line could be big down the stretch of this game, Mike. Duke down by 11. See, normally they get spurts with their defensive effort, creating turnovers and getting layups. They can't turn these guards over like they normally do. These guards are absolutely beating them off the dribble. Smith sets up Weaver again. Smith and Weaver off the bench. Tandem doing a great job. It's been a brilliant performance thus far by Wake Forest, offensively and defensively. It is a talented deep bench, and Dino Gaudio has made great use of it tonight. Singler on the bounce pass inside. He has 14. Well, look at his speed. Out fast back the other way. L.D. Williams with a miss. Look at McClure rebound. See what Smith allows to happen. He gives you numbers all the time. It's always four on three, five on four, three on two. He beats the guy off the dribble. With those three-point shots, Duke is always in it. They got to make him, though. One and done. Teague down the lane, lost a good steal by Shire. That's the first time. Very active with their hands. First time they've been able to stop the ball in the lane. Singler foul as he got in the lane. We've got a timeout, 7.52 to go. The lead is 11.
Sunday and have them in this game. I don't know if they'll be good enough to get to the winner's circle, but they're too talented and they're too tough mentally for them to fold. They're not going to fold, Mike. Singler has 15. He's played solid. They haven't gotten enough help for Singler or Henderson. But this Wake team has been sensational defensively. And the penetration, the quickness of getting into that lane by Smith and T has been outstanding. They have been exceptional. They have also gotten a really good game out of Johnson. Aminu has played well. McFarland has played well. Duke's had a tough time trying to check their guards. McFarland with a pass to Aminu. Paulus tips it to Shire. And Paulus is in there because he's a guy who can get hot from the outside. Henderson slashes. In. What a move. Two guys are going to beat five. Shire and Paulus are going to have to make some shots. The lead is cut to seven. You know there's no give in this team. McFarland with four fouls backs in. Paulus reached in and caught him on the wrist. Free throw line is going to be big. I'm so impressed with Wake Forest's athleticism, their toughness, and their physical stature. They're not making the big mistake, the kind of errors they made consistently against Virginia Tech. Did. Well, you know, Virginia Tech, though, played really outstanding basketball. They were up oh, 30, absolutely. 32 to 16 in that game, and it looked like it was going to be a blow on the second half. Wake came back, but not enough. Got to make free throws. You want to seal the deal, it's you got to be convert. big. They shoot 70.7% as a team. They got to get Shire some looks for a three. Defense really matching up on the perimeter. Well, they've got their shooters in now. Shire, too strong. McFarland with a rebound. Shire has been off tonight, as has the rest of the Duke offense from long range. T. Good defense by Pulse. You know, Stayed right in his face. Guy like McFarland doesn't get a lot of publicity, but he's giving him solid, solid play. Good minutes out of him. His size on great hand. They all can handle the big guys. Reach in and a foul on Shire as he tried to knock it away. That will be two on Shire. See, one of the great assets they possess, the size players they have basically have good handle. Especially Amino That's and Johnson. Right. They can really put the ball to the floor. A little shake and bake, a little front change. Johnson at the line, not their best. A 68% free throw shooter on the one and one, and he misses the front end. Two straight opportunities for Wake to build the lead. Singler drives, had it blocked. Aminu was right there. They do a terrific job blocking shots. So often the second guy gets a block, and that time Aminu was waiting. He'll try from the baseline with a miss. That's going to be a foul on McFarland. Climb in the back. Excuse me, it's going to be on Shire. Take a look at the block shot. There's Amino. Great timing on the block. Good angle. I tell you, we got a club that can block shots, shut you off on the perimeter, close out on shooters with that length. I mean, you're going to be a ball game. Pretty good, aren't they? They can score as well. When you got five guys shooting better than 50%. These guys are a legitimate number one seed and a contender for a national championship. There is nothing they don't have. They lack the great outside shooting as a team, but Teague is a guy who can do that for him. That size inside will also put guys on the free throw line. Other Franny Fraschella made a great point last night with Blake Griffin of Oklahoma. He, because wears people down, just like Tyler Hansbrough, get people into foul trouble on that front line. 62 to 54. Duke still hanging around the neighborhood. That defense really right up in your face. You get very few open looks on the perimeter. Nice pass inside. Handball. Oh, oh, he blocks it from behind. Henderson never saw it. He said, thou shalt not enter thy lane, baby. That's not his strength, shooting the ball from no. the perimeter. Smith. We're seeing a bunch of kids play so hard, playing with such pride out there. Mike Krzyzewski asking for a timeout. And some disagreement with the officiating crew. I'm not sure what. 
I'll tell you one thing. You look at the scoring, Singler and Henderson have 24 points in the second half. The rest of the team, zero, other than Shire with a deuce. I mean, you've got to have some people step up. Look at that size. That's big league style. I mean, that's NBA size. Now, a couple of these guys we haven't seen, but McFarlane at seven feet. Weaver's played a lot of minutes. Johnson at 6'9", and Menu at 6'9". But you know, my two guys can't beat far. And Henderson and Singler are exclusively doing all their scoring in the second half, with the exception of a deuce by Shire. The rest of the team has got Zippo. Zippo! We saw that last replay of Teague going down. It looked like a little flop on his part. And that left Henderson alone, but Aminu was there to block the shot. All I can simply say is you take a look at McFarland and the staff. Virginia has the luck of playing Duke. I wouldn't want to play Duke after an L. I can tell you that. I wouldn't want to play him at any time. I know, but after an L especially. I mean, look at the strength of this conference. So powerful at the top. See, last year, Wake Forest had a brilliant performance and beat Duke by 13 and then proceeded to lose four in the next five and lost an NCAA berth. This is a different team. You're right. You can't be able to just rest on your laurels. Singler, big three. He's doing all he can. Singler's he has 19 points. They cut the lead to five. The way they have been stifled, how are they within five? Because of Singler. Singler and Henderson keeping him in there, Mike. And missing free throws by White Forest has kept him in. Chris Smith running the point. See, I think this is a big possession right here for Wake. I think this is a big possession. I mean, you no know, basket. There's a foul inside away from the ball, and it's going to be on Paulus, I believe. Told you, Mike. He's matched up with Weaver at 6'11 and just had to grab hold of him. I told you, I smelled a little run out of Duke. 9 1 run, 9 1 spurt. Well, you know they're not going to quit. See, now the free throw line, really? They haven't converted on one on one opportunities, Wake, where they could have sealed the deal and made this really a game where they were out of reach. Instead, it's a basketball game now. Weaver is two for two tonight, but he is a poor free throw shooter. Coming in only six out of 15. And Mike Shashevsky, we've seen that look before tonight. But how about this? He's back within five. But see, that look is why he's so successful. He's never content and satisfied. The only thing that counts to him right now is winning this game. Not about the memories of all the national championships and the Hall of Fame. That's what makes him special. Jim Calhoun the same. Jim Behind. They're such fierce competitors. Henderson. Singler, who with his last three-point shot, fadeaway baseline try. No. Shire tried to keep it alive. Here comes Aminu. Got his own rebound. Follow. Blocked and a foul. Gonna come down on the floor. Come down to the free throw line again, Mike. Gonna come down to that free throw line. What a great handle. I mean, we're looking at a big guy here handling like a guard. I'm gonna watch him right now. What kind of glass? Go down with the defensive rebound. Take it up. Mr. Jumper get his offensive rebound. Look at that length. He's got such length, but now he's got to convert on a free throw line. 62% free throw shooter. It's the first. Well, they're not getting the guys to the line that they want there, even though they're going to the line frequently here. How big we've seen so often the free throw line, a simple area of the game. You talk about strategy, and it comes down to converting on that free throw line to make life easy for your teammates and coaches. The three-time freshman of the week hits them both at 65-57. Doing a great job matching up on the exterior on the perimeter. Henderson trying to penetrate, kicks it back to Singler for three, too strong. McClure, offensive rebound, back to Smith for three. And Smith is fouled by T. That's that deep. is the cardinal sin. You give him three free throws. Smith's been so quiet in this game. Shire's been quiet. Smith's been quiet. Polis has been quiet. He Boy, fouled and him. He did. He made contact. Got him Not on the arm. Not a good play right there by Mr. T. So Smith, who is Duke's best free throw shooter, goes to the line. He is at 45 out of 50 coming into this ball game. He's one for two tonight. 
I'd like to have him on the free throw line if you coach K. Huh. Going to full court pressure if he converts the third one. Right with, within striking distance. Amazingly, this would keep them within five points, the 409 mark. And we're down 11 about two and a half minutes ago. Every possession gets bigger and bigger. Fans will stand it up. The floor on T. A lot at stake in a game like this could play a big role of being a number one seed. Oh, telegraph that baby, but he catches. Right Weaver with the jam. Utilized his size and his hands. Had great foresight to catch that basketball. Patience before he went up and dunked it. Henderson called for a hook. An offensive foul his fourth. Used the free arm to try to go to the baseline. Look at the hands here, Mike. Great hands. Poise at Jam City. Twenty-eight to go in the ball game. I tell you one thing, Mike. If I'm Duke, I want to foul Smith. I want to make Smith go to the free throw line. Forty-four percent, twenty-nine percent in his first two years. I would make him have to make free throws. Johnson kicks it back outside the team. Shot clock at seventeen for three. Short, and it's out to wait. Or excuse me, out to Duke. Duke right now has got to find somebody to give a little helping hand to Singler and Henderson. Look at this. Here are the numbers. 27 points, only five for the rest of the team. Smith's quickness has bothered Shire getting right up in his face. Sure has. Henderson kicks it. Three. Got it. It's a two-man game. Henderson and Singler played a little two-man basketball. 22 for Singler, and it cuts the lead to four. Did a great job of a little two-man play. Very unselfish there. Henderson puts the ball to the floor. Watch this right now. He'll put it to the floor. The triple threat possession. Reverse it back out, and Singler shows his range as a shooter. Teams who have been number one this year have a bullseye on their chest. It's not been very comfortable at the top. North Carolina was stunned by Boston College after being number one for seven weeks. That elevated Pittsburgh. They were there for two weeks until they were knocked off by Louisville. Then Wake Forest elevates to number one. They lose to Virginia Tech at home. Now Duke can the Blue Devils hang on by their fingernails. They are down by four right now at Wake Forest. Well, that opens the door for Connecticut. If they beat the Paul and beat Providence this week and Duke loses, they'll go over to Louisville as number one. And the question will be, can Louisville then beat another number one team like they beat Pittsburgh? I've had two people tell me Louisville is playing as well as anybody in the country. They are right. You got three. Because I'm three. Tell okay. you <laughs> Singler is right. an yeah, 83% exactly. shooter. See, here's the guy you don't want to put on the line. You want to put on the line somebody like Ish Smith. You don't want this guy on the line. First free throw in the last three plus halves that he has played. That's remarkable. A guy who scores as much as he do and he, uh, does and drives as well as he does. Well, he's been basically utilizing the perimeter jump shot rather than his drive to the goal. He shoots that floating layup rather than go right to the basket. But he's a terrific player. His best friend, one of his closest guys, was a first rounder from his area. When I said there were five from that area, Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon now playing in the NBA was from Indianapolis as well. Teague only one out of two and Wake Forest struggling at the free throw line they're keeping Duke in it the Warriors and the Mavericks coming up next Good time of factor now two and a half minutes Shire he's been off all night McClure nearly saved the fatigue comes out with it will he back it up no he goes right in and McClure with a great defensive play 
Smith fouled by Johnson. See, I thought right there, I thought that he got fouled. I thought Teague's body, I thought the way a lot of contact on him going to the basket. Take a look right here. Here goes Teague, Mike. Right now, that's a good change, good front change. I thought he initiated the contact, not that that doesn't usually draw a foul. I thought it was a pretty good no call. Yeah, you're probably right. You got two eyes, I got one, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. He goes yeah, but that one, line. boy, you're sneaky good with that one. 68-64, this would cut it to a one-possession lead, and Duke misfires at the free-throw line. The biggest lead was 13. They cut it to four. It was 61-48, Mike. 61-48. Got a lot at stake here. Number one, Duke. You got a team here. They want to be a number one seed. Ultimately, they could say it's early, but trust me, they want that to happen. They want to go to Greensboro when it's all set. Dino Gaudio spreading the floor. Little Smith smoke. slices in. No basket. Singler with a rebound. They went to his zone defense right there, dude. Into the zone. Singler really playing his heart out. Shire gets caught on the baseline. Smith was wide open, didn't take the shot. Henderson stripped on the way in. Teague was ahead of the pack. They missed him, and now Teague will back it out. Gotta back what it a up. big defensive set that was. You got to back it up. Play smart basketball. Bring the ball out. Aminu lost the ball and then flops and is called for the foul. Well, two things happen there. You stop the clock. You make Duke go to the free throw line. You don't take time off the clock. Number one, you spread the court, take time off the clock. Instead, you allow Duke to still have life. Go to the line. Fourth the foul stops. on Al Farouk Aminu. Silly foul. Reaching in there. Silly foul. And then he flops trying to draw the charge. That is a freshman mistake for the young man from Norcross, Georgia. And it will send Duke to the free throw line. A chance to cut it to two. And this guy can flat out shoot free throws. Can he? Sh Shire can do that. I'll tell you, that was a big, big play right there. That is a major play that happened there. Seven for seven. Eight for eight for Shire from the line. It is a two-point game. This is an amazing comeback. You know, Wake Forest, the way they were playing, most teams would have folded. But Duke, the unbelievable tenacity, the coaches, the motivation, they did not fall. I told you, Mike, when they were down 13, we're going to see a little spurt. They're not going away. You said we'd see a run, and it may not be over yet. Let's go to Dan Schulman. Dan? All right, Dan, thanks very much. 106 to go here. 28 on the shot clock for Wake Forest. See, clock management, Mike. You got to be able to manage that clock. You got the lead right now. You got to back this ball out, spread the court, instead of trying to force something into the middle. Try to create something that's not available. Just spread the ball, court. That's as much a mistake by Teague as it is Aminu because he's he's supposed to be the leader out there and not make that pass, right? Now, exactly. Now, you look at Duke going to that zone. They're going to play a zone. The one guy, if I'm Duke, I'm putting on a free throw line is Smith. That's the guy I'm going to let. I'm going to allow him to take some time off that clock. They're going to match up out of this zone. See, now it makes Smith go to the free throw line. Three on the shot clock. Smith with the shot. No. Duke with the basketball. Two to tie. Three to take the lead. You've got to be kidding. It's unbelievable. Now you know that Singler's going to be involved in Henderson. They're going to be involved. A little back screen for Henderson. They missed him. He was wide open. Shire was wide open and missed the shot. And then Shire gets the rebound. What a great hustle. They missed on a back screen. He was wide open. He was wide open off a back screen by Singler. And they missed him. 
That shows you the kind of confidence they have in Shire. He is only two out of 11 today, and yet he ends up with a shot that could have given them the lead. See, look at this right here. Look at him. He's oh. wide open. Freeze it. He's wide open. He wants the ball. Nobody sees him. They set a back screen. Oh. But what presence of mind by Shire. He knew the shot was short. Now the shot clock is off. 17-4 to go. When do you want to take that shot? Do you leave yourself time for a rebound? Absolutely. And right now, you think of taking the deuce rather than the three. You shoot the three. If it's available, you shoot it for the win. But you want to get this baby to get the tie if you got the high percentage, too. But you will take the three to win it if it's available. Henderson and Singler are the two guys who have carried Duke all night long. One of those guys got to get the ball. Absolutely. They got to be involved in the play. Same thing. But they have whittled this lead down unbelievably. Because of a lot of guts in the heart and just a bunch of tough kids reflecting their coaches' emotion and intensity. Duke is out of timeouts. Wake has three left. Wow, this is the way it's supposed to go down to the end, right? Having trouble getting it in. They can't call timeout. They just got it in. They got it for the right guy, though. Henderson against Johnson. Pull up jump. They got it. It. Are you kidding? They got it to the right guy. Plenty of time on that clock. Now here's Teague with a chance to win it. Oh. 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 It's a travel with 2.6 seconds to go. Oh, man. Wake Forest Call the time gets out. a time out. They got time oh, for a shot. Cow. They got time for a shot. The clock doesn't run until someone touches the ball on the floor. Was that a cold-blooded shot by Henderson? Unbelievable. We knew it would be Henderson or Singler and Bow, and he made the big play, but he's been doing that for the last month. He's been sensational. And Teague had a pretty good look and couldn't hit it. There it is right now, a little isolation. You can see it right here. Take him one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to take this guy one-on-one. -on -one. Pulls up and knocks down to two. That's over a 6-9 defender. I mean, here's a tough play right here. I mean, T's going to the goal, trying to get some contact. This is not going to blow the whistle there. Boy, T gets a good look. I mean, you got a good look on the follow. If it goes overtime, usually Edge goes to the home team. But I'm not convinced the Edge is here because of the fact that they had this game oh, won. Oh, sure. They had it won. Psychologically, the Edge might go to Duke. I would have to agree. 2.6 seconds. There's Gerald Sr. That's my boy. That's my boy. That's my guy. I tell we you, we found this. out tonight. Gerald Jr. was a scratch golfer before yeah. he took up basketball. At 13 years old. Now he's age. not, but he's a pretty good basketball player, isn't he? They were saying he was coming to coming to future Tiger Woods. He was a scratch at 13. What a comeback by Duke and Wake Forest still with a chance to win it in regulation. Johnson. Johnson's the guy. Watch Johnson with that size. Throw the ball up on top to Johnson. They get it. it does. Second to go. 